Hi, my name is Kevin, and I am the lead developer of Tiger Leader, and I'd like to walk you through a sample battle here so you get a general idea of how the game plays, as well as when you get the game, you have a better understanding and it's not all new to you. This battle is going to be fought in the Russian Eastern Front in 1943, and I'm going to be doing the Blitz Objective. Due to this objective, I need to destroy at least two battalions in my first week worth of combat, and then an additional two by the second week, or else I've completely lost and I failed my blitz objective. In the start of the week, I drew a special condition card. Leadership. I gain one SO point for each battalion that I destroy. I then assign units. I have decided to resolve the 12A scout group battle first. These are the units and commanders that I've chosen for this battle. Starting from the left, we have Hans. He's green. He's not all that special when it comes to attacking, but he does have the close combat skill, which means when he's attacking at range zero, he gets to roll an entire extra attack die. He's in command of the Panzer IV, one of the best tanks of, in the German side of World War II. Next, we have Friedrich, who's average. He's a medic, and so he will be very good post-battle to help relieve stress or help fix a wounded commander. He's got plus one at range zero and plus one at range one combat, so he's doing all right, but mostly he has a lot of stress that he can get hit with. He'll be commanding the half-track SDKFC-251, which has the transport ability. This means that he can move an infantry team or an artillery piece forward without them having to cost a move action or accumulate stress by moving and attacking. Next, we have the infantry commander Fetter. He is a veteran and the highest ranking commander here. He is fast, as well as has plus two on range one or more combat, and he is leading the machine gun team. Finally, we have Muntz. He's average, but he does have a tactic. Tactics allow him to attack in both the fast and slow phase during a turn, but they're expended upon use. He will be driving the Stug 3, which, being a tank killer, him being a commander with a, an attack bonus at range 1 or more, means that the enemies really should be further away. He shouldn't be doing any range zero combat, so it's a good pairing. Let's start with the pre-combat event card. High morale is a great card because it allows me to subtract two stress from all of my participating commanders. Next, we're going to place the terrain tiles. Due to this battle being in Russia, we will be using the European terrain tiles. In the rulebook, it will tell you the difference between using European and desert tiles. Traditionally, the European tiles have a little bit more cover and the desert tiles are more open. Now, we're going to place friendly units. I can place my friendly units anywhere I want to on the bottom row. I'm going to put my machine gun team, as well as my half track with its transport ability in the heavy cover. I'm going to place my Stug 3 in this light cover to give it the most view of the battlefield, because cover obstructs vision and range. And finally, I'm going to place the Panzer in this heavy cover hex, so that way during the battle I can move him up and hopefully use his commander's close combat skill. Next, we place the enemy units in the top two rows. For every enemy unit, you roll a die to determine where it is placed. Using this little chart, for example, if you were to roll a 5, you would place the enemy unit in this hex. If you were to roll a 3, you'd place the enemy unit in this hex. And you continue rolling and placing enemies until you have no more counters. I rolled a 6, so I'm going to place the first unit right there. I have placed all of the enemy units, but due to this campaign card's special note, I'm going to add two United States tanks to the Russian forces for every battle. 
this is due to the Lend-Lease program that occurred during 1943. You can tell the difference in nationalities because the Russians are red, whereas the United States are blue. Next, we move on to combat. My fast guys get to move and attack. Of my four commanders, Fedor is the only one who's fast, but I'm going to wait until the beginning of next turn for him to attack because I don't want him in range of the enemy tanks. Now we're going to roll for the enemy order. We're going to be using the tactical movement chart, and based on what kind of unit and what die roll we get, we'll be able to see how far they advance. Something else to keep in mind is that the scout group moves kind of fast, so whatever die roll I get, I'm going to be adding one to it, making it just a little bit more aggressive. Okay, great. We have a six. That means that we bring this tactical move down to the six chart, but actually they add one, so it's down to the seven chart. This means that all of their tanks and half tracks are going to advance towards me. Their rifles, anti-tanks, and machine guns are going to advance towards me if they can't shoot at me right now, which none of them can. And then their trucks, infantry guns, mortars, and armored cards will also advance if they can't attack. Um, and let's see how they move. So, their tanks advance up. And all of the tanks are trying to get as close as they can to my units. Next, their rifles, anti-tanks, and machine guns, of which they only have rifles on the field, but they're going to advance because the rifles are not in range. And finally, the trucks, infantry guns, mortars, and armored cars are also going to advance towards me. Next, we move on to enemy actions. By advancing, the Russian tank on the far left is in range and has a clear line of sight to my three units in heavy cover. It was a good thing that I put them in the heavy cover. They have a little bit extra defense. This tank has a to hit number of two, a range of three, and a defense of two. One of the most powerful tanks in the game. So this Russian tank with a range of three means that he can hit one, two, three. He can hit all of my units in this heavy cover. The heavy cover gives them an inherent plus two defense bonus, so it's a good thing that I put them in there. This hex of light cover is blocking the line of sight between this tank to this stug. If it weren't for this, this stug would be easier to hit. The game's AI will have the allies attack first, the closest German unit, and then second, the unit that is easiest to hit. Of the three units that are within range of the enemy Russian tank, this unit has a defense of one, a defense of zero, and a defense of two. Because the allies are going to try to shoot at the German with the most chance to hit, they're going to be going after my half-track with a defense of zero. The enemy Russian tank needs to roll a two or higher to hit. Because my half-track has a defense of zero, he would traditionally need to roll a two, but he's in heavy cover, making it a four. Because the Russian tank is attacking, he always gets to roll one die, but because he advanced towards me, he gets to roll an additional die for being aggressive. On each die that he rolls four or higher, he will inflict one hit on my half-track. He hit me once and missed with the other one. Now we're going to go draw a damage chip to see what damage he inflicted. There are two kind of damage counters, one for infantry, one for vehicles. The green-backed ones are for infantry, and the silver-backed ones are for vehicles. It looks like I took a machine gun hit. This means that my half-track can no longer attack at range zero. This means that he is limited to range 1 combat only. No other units are in range to attack, so now it's time for my units to counterattack. 
First, I'm going to have unit 474, my Panzer IV, advance up to roll an extra die, and he's going to try to take out this Russian tank. My tank needs a 5 or higher to hit, and with my green commander, unfortunately, he doesn't give me any bonuses at range 1 or more combat, but he should still hit, especially with the extra die for being aggressive. He would need to roll a 5 in order to hit this enemy tank, but with the extra armor, the tank adds 2, so now he needs to roll a 7 or higher in order to hit. I'm now going to roll to see if I hit the tank. If either rolls a 7 or higher, I have successfully blown up the tank. Great! I rolled a 9, which means the Russian tank has been destroyed. To show that it is destroyed, we flip it over onto its burn side. Next, I'm going to move my half track, but he has a speed of 2, plus he has a transport, which means he can move this machine gun team up with him. Here they are moving up, and he's bringing the machine gun team with him, moving one, two hexes, again into heavy cover. My half track can now shoot. He'll be shooting at the rifle team. My machine gun team cannot shoot, however, because he can only act during the fast phase, and it's a slow phase right now. The half track normally needs to roll a 9 to hit, but because Friedrich gives him a plus 1 to hit at range 1 or more combat, he now only needs to roll an 8. Plus, because he's attacking the rifle team, which is infantry, he now only needs to roll a 7 or more to hit, and he gets two dice to do it because he was aggressive. Wow, I got two successes there. They both hit, but only one matters, so the rifle team is killed. Again, to show that they're killed, we're going to flip them over. My Stug is not advancing, but because he has a range of 1 to 3, he can shoot 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to have him attack this tank. The Stug needs to roll a 7 to hit. With his commander's plus 1 at range 1 or more, he now only needs to roll a 6 to hit. Plus, because he's attacking a tank, which is a vehicle, he only needs to roll a 5 to hit. Now, because the Stug is a tank destroyer, he's not very mobile, but, if he stands still, he gets an extra die when stationary. However, he does not get a bonus die for advancing. I would need to roll a 5 or more to hit, but because of this tank's defense of a 2, I now need to roll a 7 or more to hit with 2 dice. Looks like I did it! This tank is no longer part of the battle. With my last unit having acted, I now advance the turn counter. It's now the top of turn two. The battle will last five turns, or until the enemy is fully destroyed. That wraps up the first turn of the battle. Thank you for all of your support, and uh, we'll be posting up more videos within the next couple of days, and we look forward to seeing you on Kickstarter. If you have any questions or comments about the games, feel free to post them to Board Game Geek or Consum World or any of the other websites we use, and I look forward to making more of these.